Welcome to Disrespectfully with Katie Maloney and Dana Kathan. Unapologetically, we're here to do what we want to do. Spilling the tea. Babe, you're going to see the power of women, like disrespectfully. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. My little Valentine. My little Cupid. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you? I am feeling questionable. Why? Because I have been up since 1.30 in the morning. So oh, we're right, right, be a little right. low energy today. I'm going to try. We're going to see what happens. Usually I can fall back asleep and that did not happen. So I definitely consumed four hours of TikTok. Mm. And then the rest of that time I was watching Sex and the City. because I've been rewatching it. So perfect. But I'm excited about our plans. Because we are each other's Valentine. We are. We're going to see the new Diablo Cody, Zelda Williams joint, Lisa Frankenstein with yes. Raleigh. Yes. Oh my God, I cannot day. wait. Curious. How mm. do you feel about the term Galentines? Uh, I'm not really a fan. Hate, 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 double hate, loathe entirely. <laughs> it's, I hate that. I loathe. loathe entirely. It's just like up there with CEO. Like I hate when terms Girl are boss. gender. Yeah, I'm like, that just sounds like a peplum top. It's like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? She sheds. It's a little pumpkin spice latte. I'm like, no, no, thank you. So Anyone out there who loves Galentine's, like, to each their own. But I more so just like to hang out with my friends. And I honestly think Valentine's Day is kind of stupid. The last, even when I'm with someone, the last time that I enjoyed it was when we were in fourth grade. And we all had to go around Ugh. passing out, like, the individual. And everyone in the class got one. And when you had your little crush, you'd, like, write something extra. you pick up the, your favorite of all the, mm -hmm. the Valentine's. I mean, yeah, I do miss going to whatever, you know, grocery store. I don't know. I don't know what store we got them from and picking out the little box of Valentine's oh, and whatever, like your favorite movie or TV show mm -hmm. ones or Disney character. And then, you know, you wrote your class the little notes and then attached it to like a little piece of candy. Mm -hmm. And everyone, you made your like little custom bags or whatever, like that everyone would go collect it in. Yeah. It was such a sweet, innocent time. Like talk about nostalgia, like when the Valentine's Day aisle blew up. And you just walk down it and you pick one. And you're like, I'm about to stunt on these hoes with these. Like, <laughs> no one's going to have these. And then someone did have them. And you're like, great. Over it. Now, how, was, how am I going to stand out? That's where it ended for me. But I do love my friends. And I do think also Valentine's Day, just like we talk about all the time, shouldn't be assigned to just romantic love. I think everyone has so much love in your life. So, like, if it is your friends or you, then, yeah, love yourself extra. No, I'm only, like, a hater when I don't have a Valentine really <laughs> yeah if i if i had like a person i'd probably be way more into it okay well, well yeah obviously there's just something to me that's always like corny about it yeah i love corny shit i want the cheese i want the corn i want the sappy shit but i don't think it should just be reserved for the one day i think it should be around but that day you know you should lean in to the cheesiness what i don't like is like the whole making a res and going to a restaurant and sitting amongst all the couples every other couple that's Ugh. what i was gonna say I that would, i don't like i'd rather like do something at home or mm -hmm. do something different than like going that's i guess i'm convoluting the two because maybe it's not that i hate valentine's day but i hate that version of it when people you when you just go to a nice restaurant and every other copy and paste couple is there and they have like a prefix menu and it's crazy amount of money no, thanks. What would be an alternative? I mean, obviously, we're doing a movie, which I love, but we love to see movies in general. I'm going to have some vino before. Like an alternative if, if like you were going on a date or there was. Yeah, I would like to spend it at home. Same. And like make dinner or order in dinner and like just have it be like something. And, and even though that's not out of the ordinary, but I just think it's just you're not sharing that day with strangers outside. Yeah, I think it's just it's so much pressure. It's kind of like New Year's. New Year's fucking sucks. It's mm -hmm. expensive. It always seems like it's going to be cooler than it is. Mm -mm. Not a fan. So like a nice bottle of champagne at home. Yeah. Doing whatever. Maybe getting spanked later. You don't know. Yeah. That. You have options. That's what I mean. Yeah. So. That's what I'd be into as well. We won't be taking that journey tonight. We will be seeing the movie though. Yeah. No one's getting spanked. Mm, unfortunately. Unless. Who knows? Probably not. The thing is, we're talking to you guys like it's in the future. So when you hear this, it's going to be Valentine's Day. But we just had Super Bowl. Pointy ball was last night. And it was, I will, I will be not honest. pointy ball. Po pointy ball. It's the first pointy ball game I've watched all season. Mm -hmm. Not for like 
any particular reason. It's just, it's not saying I'm just going to like turn on and watch at home on any given Sunday or whatever days they come on. Which I'm pretty sure is the title of a movie about football. Any given Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> it is. Super Bowl Sunday is like, okay, I saw, I saw a TikTok and someone's like, it is really the most like expertly crafted day in American culture. Like it really is. Better than like Thanksgiving because people come together, you know, everyone's watching sports on the TV. It's a day of snacks, not just like one full meal, but like any snack flies, dips, chips, cookie, whatever, whatever snack is is, is appropriate. There's a halftime entertainment show for the people that don't really care about the game. There's something for you to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And if neither of those things interests you. There's some, you know, funny like commercials sprinkled into the bit. Mm -hmm. So it just is like a really well executed whole day for everyone to enjoy. So me and Raleigh said we were going to do that thing where we were going to pick a team throughout the season and like go to a <laughs> random bar and like try to get into it. And we made it one day and we got in a fight about how many teams were in Los Angeles. There's two, by the way, which we learned. Mm -hmm. So after that, it just never became a thing again and so Super Bowl is probably the only unless I actually go to a game I actually like going to football games or basketball games like live sporting events but yeah I'm not just gonna turn it on at home I've actually never been to a football game what I but the oh, I know well I was a cheerleader so I went to plenty of football games in high school you were a cheerleader yeah how did I not know this surprise <laughs> I surprise 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 so I I know, understand full game of football how it all works, what goes down. I understand the game. Um, and then, you know, ba I've been to basketball games. My favorite sporting games to go to are baseball and hockey, though. I've never been to a hockey game. They're so fun. I'd like to do a hockey game. Okay, we should go to a hockey game. And I also like baseball. Same, It's like you, in the springtime. I'm from Seattle. So in the springtime, it was like the weather was finally getting nice. So it was there's something like everyone was really horned up just because you're outside again yeah. and it's, you know, fun. And I usually do the cheap seats and then just hang out in the beer garden. But I can get behind that. Baseball is really centered around hot dogs and beer and snacks. And I'm, I'm not really like a beer gal, but like hot dogs. Glizzies are important to us. Yeah, I'm not really like a sports gal, but I am like a, I just like the the vibes. So that's what I was going <laughs> to say. So Super Bowl is fun. Vibes are immaculate. The snacks are really important to me. Mm -hmm. I always love to see. Seven layer dip. Absolutely. I always love to see what our options are going to be. There were Costco cupcakes where I was yesterday, and I was like, that's a nice touch, and a giant box of Rice Krispie treats. Were there little um, on-theme picks in the, like little toothpicks? So they didn't have the like the cupcakes. decorations part of it, but that you do love to see that, but they had like yeah. a taco bar and then a bunch of little snacks that you'd expect to be there. Okay. W wait, where were you yesterday? I was at home. <laughs> <laughs> so no toothpicks for you? No, I, I I was at home yesterday. Well, and also we went so far for people to live in LA. We went to Marina Del Rey, as I told you, and the snacks were great. The people were really fun. And they made one of those boards where you bet. And so like oh, yeah. people were really into it. But I was mostly there for the snacks and the commercials and the halftime show mm. and the keg stand. I did several keg stands. I did see on Instagram when you did a keg stand. Wait, okay. So <sighs> what did you what did you think of the halftime? What did you think of Irsh? I thought it was great. Mind you, the crowd was mixed. It was like half millennials, half Gen Z. The Gen Z were basically just like kind of bobbing along, not really getting it. Every mm. single millennial, we were all just like dancing oh, yeah. and screaming. And when Ludacris came out, oh, I, my God. I came completely undone. <laughs> I mean, how could what did you, you not? think of it? I was no, I was living for it. It was very exciting. I like that it was it had a lot of the like Las Vegas elements. They had the girls with the feathers and mm -hmm. everything. That's so why I appreciated that. And I know uh, Usher had a Vegas residency, so I was like, how much of this performance right now just like is the Vegas show? But I appreciate all of, all of it. Was there a song that he missed? No. I don't think so. No, not not anyone that we'd all want to hear. And I loved that he had the little like Britney Spears microphone, like taking us back to 2004. I mean, I loved when he took his shirt off. Absolutely. He looks amazing. Oof. How old is he these days? 45. He was looking good. I forgot, honestly, before that happened, I forgot that used to be his shtick like constantly shirt off. So I imagine he was doing that in Vegas. Yes. He was dripping in sweat. Mm -hmm. That shirt came off. I mean. I mean, it was probably out of utility. That man was toasty. He was, <laughs> he was, he was, well, there was some moisture happening pretty quickly. No, he planned the timing perfect. He's like, I'm going to be absolutely drenched, drenched. So this is when I'm going to take my shirt off. And then he just disappeared and came back in a full costume change on the quads. 
And I was like, excuse me. That was pretty impressive. Loved that. An artiste. Yeah. Came back. Was ready to go. The roller skates, which I have roller skates. I love roller skating. And I'm like, that was amazing. Also a great opportunity for someone to bust their ass and didn't end up happening. So I was really well, happy for them. He, he, he almost I feel, did. I feel like there was a little slip there at one point. There was a little bit of a whoop, whoop. But he recovered. Yeah. My Super Bowl was obviously Beyonce's commercial <laughs> and her song announcement. Anyone that knows me knows how much I loathe country music. Hate, 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 double hate, loathe entirely. I, I truly cannot stand it. And I like country music now, I guess. She's coming up. Look at you. She dropped two new country songs. The artwork, mm -hmm. her clothes, the era that she's in for lack of clothes. I'm really here for it. Actually, on her album Lemonade, Daddy Lessons, it's kind of a country sounding song. It's one of my favorite songs she's ever done. And I think my favorite song on the album. So I'm not totally surprised. But yeah, that was really exciting for me. I love that for you. My favorite commercial was the Michael Sarah commercial for Sarah V. <laughs> that was hilarious. I've been seeing bits of that all over TikTok. Love, like, what a perfect person. You didn't see that. the actual. No, I don't even think oh. I, at, who knows where I was, probably doing a keg stand, but <laughs> describe it to me. Basically, him saying that he was like the creator and mastermind mm. behind the, you know, this, the cream. He's like, this is my cream. We needed the volume up a little bit. I will say I missed a lot of the commercials because people were just so rowdy. Like, did you care about what team won? Okay. So, Growing up at home, there was definitely a lot like it was big, like 49ers household, like my brother, Joey, he's always been a huge 49ers fan. So it's like kind of like I just gravitate towards like what my brothers liked. He's a big like Joe Montana, Jerry Rice fan. And Joey was at the game. So like I, I just was like, OK, well, I'm just going to go for the Joey Niners. was at the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. In the last like two minutes. I was like texting. Him. I was like, oh, this is intense. He was like, I hate it. <laughs> I watched the whole thing. I was sat at home and I just was like, well, here I am. I'm going to watch. And I was dialed in. I was locked into it. I usually like pick the people in the room that I like and who they're rooting for. And that's usually how I select my team. So I wanted the 49ers to win, but okay. I didn't think they were going to. It was getting down it, to it. It was close. I mean, they went into overtime. What, what are we? What are we sports? I know. I'm like, right this now? is fucking boring. We have to move on. But that's, I'd say, the Super Bowl stick. People are gonna are tune. We're already tuned this out. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. We love Jenny Kane, and it's mm -hmm. a perfect timing, honestly, because the New Year's resolution was to finally find a uniform I'm completely obsessed with. Jenny Kane is a California brand through and through, and their staples make getting dressed easier than it's ever been. Think minimalist and effortless, but totally refined. From luxurious cashmere sweaters and iconic accessories to elevated versions of all your everyday basics, not to mention the most incredible home essentials too. Mm -hmm. So chic. Jenny Kane is here to help you live your best year yet. And for a limited time, our listeners get 15% off their first order. Go to JennyKane.com and use the code disrespectfully to get 15% off. You may have noticed that I love wearing sweaters. I have noticed that. And that is why I love the mohair boyfriend cardigan. I mean, I love a cardigan. Love it's a cardigan. It's like all I wear is cardigans, it truly. Is. Because you get to dress it up or wear it like pretty pretty much anywhere. I like putting it with like a skirt and some tights maybe, you know. I've been focusing more on high quality mm. staples and having that in my wardrobe. Their cashmere sweaters are so high quality. They're super chic. I obviously got it in black. And same thing, I like to mix and match it with like tights or something cute and maybe a little sexier underneath. Or you can do it for everyday wear. It's just the best. I mean, the other cashmere is so soft. That like cashmere hoodie that I have. Mm. I want to live in that. It's like butter. Butter, baby. I want to live in it. Plus, everything in their collection is designed so intentionally. And you can style their pieces together without a second thought. They also have shoes. Like, could that get any better? The kitten heel is officially back. And I'm obsessed with the modern suede take. The Blake boot is everything you want in a classic winter shoe. And you can't forget their home essentials. Timeless furniture pieces, cozy pillows and throws. and the most incredible candles. We love a candle. Oh my God, I love a candle. They also have incredible rewards program when you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase and it's completely free to join. So find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code disrespectfully at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com using promo code D-I-S-R-E-S 
P-E-C-T-F-U-L-L-Y. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers, the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better than the average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. What I love about Shopify is no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support you and your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash disrespectfully, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash disrespectfully now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in, shopify.com slash disrespectfully. You don't have to sell just your own stuff anymore. With Shopify Collective, you can curate products to sell from the brands you love, giving your customers more variety and your business more sales. Grow your average order value with the Shopify Bundles app, where you can create and sell product bundles with ease. Can we just talk about the Apple goggles? (laughs) I've been dying to discuss this with someone. When I saw those pop up, I was like, I hope these are not real. I hope these are a joke and I hope no one buys these. I'm so deeply relieved you feel this way because I mean, I couldn't <laughs> imagine you. you just walk in here with the gogs on. You just sit down to do the interview. <laughs> I mean, I am devastated. It's like, so dystopian. Boner killer. If a guy walks in with those, I'm just gonna be like midnight to six. <laughs> you, you think that I'm going to have sex with you if you're sitting in a crosswalk doing this? If anywhere, like, what anywhere, are you doing anywhere? If I see you wearing those and you're with your hands in the air. <laughs> Like my vagina is so dry for you. Dry. It's not. Even- it's worse than brown leather flip flops. The only thing where is <laughs> those two combined. I'm like, what the literal fuck? Do you know that you can like change the eyes so the eyes like you can have like monster eyes? <gasps> no, I hate it. That's devastating. Just when I thought it couldn't stoop any lower. It's tragic. I don't understand. Name of a, 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 like a situation or a reason that anyone would need to have them. Have to have them. If someone did, they just really wanted it. They loved the concept at home. While you're at home, if like it's a way to watch a movie surround sound or super cool. First of all, I don't understand the cord that comes out. Does it connect in your phone? Because that's I, not very high tech for me. I don't understand that either. It looks like a fucking scuba suit from 1942. <laughs> Literally, when they used to have like their air thing connected yeah. like this and then just like the giant goggles. I'm like, OK, you guys, we're going in the wrong direction. First of all. Second of all, if you have to have it, OK, at home, whatever. But then taking it to the streets is so just walking around with that. And I'm. I can just see someone on a walk right now, like listening to our podcast on them. And I'm, I'm sorry, we're not like trying to alienate you, but fuck, go back home if you really need to use them. And yeah, just the people I've seen on TikToks that are just walking through. Then I saw one where someone was driving their Tesla. They got pulled over by the cops and they were wearing them. And I'm like, I wonder if it's legal to be driving with them. But like, let's just find devices to further remove us from reality. I'm just still wondering what the the point is. So you can have all of, so you can just basically have what's in your phone just in front of. So you'll be talking to me and like what you just have, like your music player in front of my face. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Wow. It's, so I can zone you out. We are all on our phones all the time. So it's basically like, you know what? You put it in your pocket. Let's just get it back right in front of your face. Have you ever seen Wally? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I'm just still trying to picture like having, trying to take anyone serious. Wearing, I just click my monster eyes on <laughs> we're having this conversation all the time. I fucking goggles. Sully from Monsters, Inc. Goggles. Imagine <laughs> trying to spit game at someone with those things on. They're it's so fucking, it's, I'm literally tearing up. It's <laughs> so upsetting. And I, I, I just I don't even know. It is dystopian. This is the final frontier. Climate change is coming for us. And this is like 
the last layer. The amount of dude bros that I saw posting on the stories the past week. Got him. Well, gonna file that one away into like the nope category. Imagine, yeah, where was it? When were, why weren't these out when we were having our ick episode? <laughs> Imagine someone trying to kiss you with those things on. <laughs> just like going in for and just like bonk. You're like, oh, sorry, I gotta check my email one second. Okay. Right. What are you doing? Have you- <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? Sorry, it's like a fucking this- symphony, like <laughs> orchestra person, but not. Stop it. And also, I in one of the videos, they were not the person who was supposed to be walking in a crosswalk because that is the function crosswalk stopped in the middle of it. And a car was just waiting there and they're just like <laughs> doing the thing. Anyway, freaks me out. Have you seen Wally? Um, Yeah, but I don't remember. I mean, I haven't seen Wally since it like, came out like. Um, 20 years ago. Wally is just coming true by the moment. If you haven't seen it, this little adorable robot gets left on a planet. It's the only functioning one. Everyone went to space to leave the robots to clean up and they plan to come back to Earth. Um, and then in space, they all just are on floating chairs with screens in front of their face. So they'll even be next to a friend on a floating chair, but they just talk to the screen. Mm hmm. Wow. Wally is starting to happen. It's just devastating to watch. Keep those things at home. I also heard like people are, someone did a funny TikTok where they were like, oh yeah, I just got the goggles. I love them. And they just like cut to their nightstand and there's a bunch of tissue and <laughs> lotion. I This is, okay, this is already with the Oculus, I, the VR. I could understand that. Games, and that like, seems like a very much like, this is this is like a, a gaming device. Mm-hmm. Like I'm putting it on virtual reality. I want to play games with my little dude, dude, dude. And there's some all the videos of people like literally eating shit while they're trying to play with their Oculus. Like, you see the girl that like, ran in the cabinet, ran into the microwave, and it shattered. <laughs> it's like fucking idiot. Anyway, I know people can watch VR porn with that mm-hmm. on, which is like so. Any man that any grown man that's playing a, a lot with his Oculus, I'm like, he's playing a lot with less. his Oculus. I, I, I know what you're doing. Dating is already in hell. You- <laughs> We're never going to see anyone again. If you want to date a human man. Like, I know what you're doing. We know what you're doing. We know what you're doing. Yeah, you know they're not watching ethically no, sourced I'll, porn. No, because you can honestly, you can always tell when you're having sex with the dude and he watches a lot of porn. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> right? Yes, I'm laughing because it's true. When they like choke you and they don't know how to choke you for anyone listening choking (laughs) is meant to restrict blood flow that's where the like stimulation comes from so you want i can not airflow yeah not airflow blood flow so you want a nice squeeze from the outside don't crush my goddamn windpipe (laughs) (laughs) where is this halloween the final chapter like (laughs) sir what the fuck are you doing like general it's just like it's obvious well and it's It's like obvious it's like a hair dog (laughs) fucking like you see it at the ceiling you're like babe that's not it and there's that scene in euphoria in the first season where they splice through like this is what people are exposed to these days and it's just everything is like so violent and so overwrought and it's just like yeah so now people are just gonna get a nice 360 view of that and i don't mean to generalize but it i haven't seen many women walking around i've seen so far on tiktok one woman walking around with those goggles and i'm like I mean, I want to see more videos of people doing it just because it's hilarious. I don't want anyone to get hurt, but I want, I mean, I like watching you do silly things if you're not hurt. I don't want you to be hurt, but fuck. (sighs) Take those goddamn goggles. (laughs) Also, okay, so we're women, so we constantly have to be aware of our surroundings at all times. Like, you are, if you're in a parking garage, your head is on a swivel, you're paying attention. Like, women who go on runs at night with their headphones and that's i would literally never and i'm not blaming anyone it should be a safe world for us to be able to do that but that to me is one more layer and even guys like someone could run up on you and rob, rob you. you i don't know when you're just like take those dumb goggles those off your face goggles are the, <laughs> they're thirty five hundred dollars that's how much they cost they're thirty five hundred dollars i am appalled with tax they're four grand so Stop also it. did you see that guy who ran into the apple store and like ripped out like he took like 50 iphones like just robbed them and ran out which wasn't a great plan because they're all tracked and whatever but yeah those alone are a reason to get robbed so not only are you checking your snapchat and looking at hulu but now you aren't paying attention to what's around you your monster eyes are on <laughs> You're going to get robbed. No, you scare them away with those monster eyes, obviously. <laughs> yeah, maybe. That's... I did not know that they cost that much money. Four grand. Y- y- y'all should be ashamed of you yourselves. look like a ding dong. <sighs> what an epic waste of money. Oh, my God. It just gets worse and worse. So anyway, we'll see 
how that continues. I mean, but I want to definitely like try it out. But like, <laughs> out of principled stance, I won't even um, ever try I, one. I, I get like claustrophobic. So having something on my face like that would really bother me. And I just see Scuba Steve walk down the fucking street. I'm walking <laughs> the other direction. I'm not talking to you. You know how they're like, imagine meeting the love of your life and realizing he claps when the pl- plane lands. Imagine meeting the love of your life. Like you, you meet at the coffee shop, you have the best conversation and he gets up to leave and he's like, it was really nice to meet you. Puts on his goggles and walks out the door. What do you do? You cry. Block immediately. He's like, hold on, let me put you in my phone. <laughs> he's like, tap your phone to my face, please. Gotta share contacts. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, so, it's so dark. <laughs> Fuck is happening right now. <laughs> 2024 was so promising on January 1st. I know. Things have taken that and the goddamn Cybertruck. Can we talk about that? No. Wait, hold on. I'm just picturing, like, <laughs> I'm staring at you with the goggles on. You're like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm taking a picture. <laughs> he does the three minute stare. <laughs> with the goggles on. Monster eyes, but he's just taking You're photos. like, wait, the monster eyes. like, sorry, let me turn this off. He's like, what are you doing? Like, he's like, I was just taking a picture of you. He's like, there's a camera right here. They're like, oh, God. I want to vomit. And like, imagine, I imagine those things can like record. Like, it's just. <laughs> okay, anyways. The, oh, the, the cyber truck. There's a guy who is a TikTok account dedicated to the flaws of that monstrosity. And it's one of my favorite. I mean, I'm so anti i hate elon musk i mean i don't know him but just everything he stands for as a person i would say and i love to see him fail i saw in a, in a montage of the people with wearing the goggles i saw a guy get out of one of those trucks with those on <laughs> i was like this of course he wants to set it to self-driving mode so it could plow a bunch of kindergartners <laughs> that are trying to get onto a bus and he, well he's just like leaning back in his seat doing his doodles <laughs> it's just like so crazy I'm so obsessed with all the flaws. So if it rains on your cyber truck, you have to dry it immediately. Really? And wash Why? It immediately. It's rusting already. It literally says it on the thing. So it's supposed to be this What's indes- the point? indestructible thing. And it they it Except doesn't it rust if it all cars have a clear coat, right? To seal the paint for this reason to protect the paint from the elements. It doesn't have that. So oily fingerprints, you literally touch your car, you have to clean it. Um it also doesn't have a crumple zone on the front or the back, which all cars do. There's there's a reason for that. So not only is it super unsafe for pedestrians or other vehicles, but it also can create some type of, I mean, I don't know the science, go find the TikTok, but it's not good so far. And I've seen a bunch of them breaking down like it's supposed to, it can't compete with just like a regular truck, but it's trying to be anyway. You meet the love of your life. <laughs> coffee shop thing happens and he walks out into a cyber truck <laughs> he goes and gets into a cyber truck or let's just say you don't know any of this he picks you up for a date it's a cyber truck are you like uh, we're like i don't know you sir bye <clears throat> i think i'm coming down with a tickle in my throat when i have to reschedule mm-hmm. or never that was so cathartic i feel so much better <laughs> i've been dying to talk shit about that to someone oh my god basement behavior take every single pair of I'm kick getting them down ahead the of it all, but those are going in the basement this week. The only functionality of those would be to like basically have them on and not be using them and just pretend that you're doing things so you can listen to other people's conversations, which is arguably oh. one of my favorite things to do. I love to eavesdrop. Oh my God. There is <laughs> nothing I like more than quieting down my conversation when I hear drama, when I hear goss that has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. And I just do a little... Is there anything better? No, I love it. It's a goddamn delight. Remember when we were on the train and that girl was talking about like her. Oh my God. Boyfriend or what was the. This was in the UK. I don't know where the fuck we were, what was happening. But there was this girl having the world's loudest phone conversation about (laughs) her shitty situationship. He clearly hated her. Yeah. Wasn't a thing. And this went on for out of the three hour train. 45 minutes. Maybe, maybe up to an hour and a half. And we were all sitting there quietly listening and we were all like talking to each other, literally texting amongst ourselves like, girl, you got to dump him, dump him immediately. Like he does not like you. And she was like basically saying she had been over to his house recently and then hadn't heard from him in a really long like since then. And he, you know, she probably thought he was busy because he hasn't been as responsive and whatever. And we're like, he's not, not, he hates He's not you. busy. He hates you. He has a wife and kids, obviously. <sighs> She's like, but. Obviously, I'm going to see him later. When I was headed to New York, I think I told you that my I, we got on the plane and then had to deplane. And I realized it was United flight. And this morning I was listening to a podcast about 
the the Alaska flight that the panel popped off and like what oh the consequences God. of that are and shit. And United and Alaska are the only two airlines that have those planes. And we on the on the plane, they were like, hey, sorry, guys, we waited for an hour. They're trying to make sure this software update happened. We can't fly without it. And then they deplaned us and I was pissed. But then I talked about the burnt toast theory and I was like, yeah. just go with it. It's a software problem is what's the next thing that's happening with these planes. I guarantee I was on one of them, one of the, the planes. So I'm <gasps> like, I don't know if there's a way I can go back and look, but I'm personally thrilled that that we got deplaned and whatever. But while I was sitting there for four hours, I went to the Beecher's cheese stand and had some macaroni and, and an alcohol <laughs> at 10 a.m. or 8 a.m. or whatever fucking time it was. And this couple walked up behind me and they were quietly shouting, you know, the like uh, breathy, like you're really mad at someone, and, but you don't want people to hear you. And he was like, you always fucking do this. He's like, they had an entire fight and really needed to break up. But I was like, no, keep going. I was like, these seats are available. <laughs> Take a seat right there. It was like Chris Hansen, Dateline. Just have a seat right there. <laughs> Loved it. And especially people are going to have like phone conversations with their one of my biggest pet peeves is when someone has their speakerphone on mm. and they're having that conversation. It's like, well, we're all part of this. People like to do it on planes. So you're trapped. Now we all need to listen to your entire conversation, the whole thing. Because I'm such a nosy, nosy. bitch, I would never do that because I assume everyone's listening. I'm also hyper paranoid that people are listening to my conversations and like keeping those details to myself. And then I come on here and tell it to a bunch of strangers. But maybe just for funsies, just tell a story that's completely like not true. A for the plot. For the a plot. fake for the plot. When you know that someone's uh, listening, just start making up like wild shit as you go. Speaking of for the plot, I realize after because when we always say we like talk about these things, we forget who we are. Literally a month and a half ago or whatever. Remember when I was supposed to, we were going out in LA and then I ended up flying to Miami like an hour and a half later, like randomly got on a plane and was in Miami for like 36 hours when Katya was in town. I was like, that was such a good for the plot. And I completely forgot it. But anyway, I have so many more of those stories. Or maybe it was like three months ago. Remember we were like going to that art gallery and she came over at like six and that guy who liked her and like they had kind of been talking for a while was um, like, hey, I'll fly you and Dana out. And I was like, tell him if he flies us first class, I'll come. And because she was she didn't even mention it. we were getting ready. And she was like, oh, yeah, he said he'll fly us out. And I was like, she, but she's like, I knew you wouldn't want to. And I was like, what are you talking about? Of course I want to. We, we would only be able to be there for 36 hours. So I was like, first class and we're going. And then he booked it. So that was lovely. And 36 hours did not sleep on the plane, did not sleep during that time, maximized Miami time and got back here for work on Monday, which was wild i swear i don't do this all the time it sounds like i do i'm out till five all the time but <laughs> you're not doing yourself any favors it also happened on friday but anyway we don't need to get into that i've been sleeping like a champ i've been really committed to my magnesium lately i drink this stuff called magnesium people also are saying tart cherry juice do you believe that i'm like, i mean ambient doesn't say... even work for me so i don't know if tart juice is taking me out but i've seen that a bunch of times and i would like to try it we should try that i want to do you know what's funny? So many people responded and reached out to us about the synesthesia thing. I know. Do you know what else someone said to me? And what? this is so unbelievably wild. So it was like the synesthesia and the imagination. So a lot of people basically confirmed like, no, I cannot picture things in my head. A bunch of people messaged and said that they don't have an inner voice. They don't have any. They're, they're not being spoken the to. An inner dialogue? No inner dialogue. Do you have an inner dialogue? Yeah. Yeah. Like when I'm sitting there thinking, I hear like a, a voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I hear voices. Yeah. No, I like hear. I don't. I'm I, I'm assuming it's my voice. It's not like a. it's what I've imagined to be my voice. There's a book that talks about it. And basically it calls that your roommate. Like that's not supposed to be your conscious self. It's something that talks to you and it's in your yeah. voice. But to be a woman is to perform. I've had an inner dialogue that won't shut the fuck up since 1991, probably. So I'm like, that person, you, those people, you don't realize how lucky you are. That That's person is actually my roommate now. Yeah. Because like I talk to that person all day long. That is the part. That's half the reason I've had insomnia for 10 years because <laughs> she's yapping away. And I'm like, oh, my, you are exhausting. Is this how you make people feel when you're out in public? Jesus Christ. But I'm like, to not have that, heaven. When they're thinking, like if they're going, if they're trying to process information, if they're working through something, what's going on? A whole lot of nothing. Is it photos? I 
I don't no. know because I imagine they don't see pictures. Either. Is it just is it words? Is it, it does it sound like tumbleweeds? If you don't have the dialogue, what do you when you're thinking about something like you want to say or you're you're just like working through a problem? What does it look? What does it sound like? I don't <laughs> What's know. Going on? But I'd rather have that than <clears throat> what I currently have. So you're so lucky. No, I like this. Oh, I'm not a fan. I have, I'm medicated to have it cut down a little bit, but my God, I'm like, it's so active. Do they not have like memories? I don't know. It sounds like another gift because I'm over here like the Grinch, like now to take care of these pesky memories. Like <laughs> I fucking wish. I just, I don't understand how that's possible. Also, can I tell you something? What? I happen to know for a fucking fact, and he's probably gonna listen to this too, that 26 year old I went out with not only listened to the segment specifically about him, but he showed it to his friends. They watched it on YouTube. How do you know this? Because he told me. Well, <laughs> and I was like, you, okay, excuse me, sir. First of all, you, he pre-screened it himself. He wasn't going to show it to his friends, obviously, if it was like something bad, but he wasn't mad. I said he was a good kisser. So he like wanted to show them, which I thought was funny, but I was like, okay, I guess nothing's sacred anymore. <laughs> We're just out here exposing ourselves of all the, all the things. And you know what? Here's the thing. If you think this is about you, you think I'm talking about you. It's probably because you've either done something really wrong or really right <laughs> to me and our experiences, um, which I'm never going to confirm or deny that. Mm -mm. Wait, what made you think of thirst traps, even in general, to like talk about? Just because I'm a fan of thirst traps. You are. Yeah, aren't you? Oh, yeah. But I also like dick pics, so I think that's not surprising. And you but know, okay, so, like I'm a fan of thirst traps in the sense that when and how they're used, you just got to trap them with with the thirst <laughs> do you like them from you doing them yourself or seeing them me doing them. okay okay mm. so here's my thing with thirst traps like uh, sometimes okay i'm gonna expose myself here sometimes i'll be like with a friend and we'll be like bored we're like sh we should post thirst trap and just like see who traps so you post one on like your story and then you'll go to your story views and see who's viewed it and then send a message be like hey oh you reach out yeah because you know they've seen it Wait, I have never heard of you doing this before. It's not like I do it all the time. How often do you see me post thirst traps anyway? So I was going to say, because I so enjoy it. There are certain people I want to see. I can actually specifically think of one of yours right now when we were at Stassi's show and you were in that like see-through skirt, one on your carousel. I also love that when it's like unexpected because like the first photo is, you know, not necessarily anything mm -hmm. hanging out. Normal, and then you scroll yeah. through and you're like, oh, and that was a good one. Your butt is so cute. You sometimes you just got to remind people. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, I really like them on stories. So like yeah. I, I'll do an occasional grid one. But yeah, same thing. If I'm if I'm feeling a little frisky and I'm like out somewhere and I take a good one, I want that same thing. I don't want to see who's viewing it and I want to see who's sending me a heart. Who's liking I wanna see it? who's flaming it. I who wanna see who it? gives me I want I want honestly put in some effort. If you do a quick reaction, I'm like, okay, mm. you're obviously Sometimes just Sometimes it's just through, for the sport. Yeah. I also love to consume them. Like anyone's I would say I prefer women's and mm. even like on TikTok, sometimes I like a man's, but sometimes they're f so fucking cringe. It makes me want to I've, pull my mm, eyeballs out. I've th There's a difference between like a hot photo of a guy and a thirst trap from a guy. Yeah, mm. no, totally. And on TikTok, I love any woman who does just like a slutty little, little sassy vid. <laughs> I'm like hard, like immediately yeah. love, can't get enough of. And then I keep scrolling and I see some guy who's doing he wants to be a chef or something and he's like fingering a chicken breast and i'm like sir and then like with his like shirt up i'm like this is this i have never been more grossed out in my <laughs> entire life i kind of like those videos though oh, katie <laughs> katie they're funny i'm disgusted in you right now but, but they're, think, they're not trying to be funny no but there's i think he knows what he's doing did you see the gas pump guy huh <laughs> you just sounded like my niece who always goes who huh when I say anything to her, huh? he took a video of him pumping gas once and he took the gas pump and he like shoved it in his gas thing and was like doing that. And I'm like, OK, so maybe he was kidding. I don't know. I don't think they're funny. I do think a lot of them are serious. And I'm like, this is jail. <laughs> Felony. Jail. Hard okay. time. No. Love when women do it, though. Yeah. But it's like you I feel like if your if your feed is looks like a like calendar of just like your naked body you know it's kind of like oh uh, okay we get it yeah i like when they're like little surprises every now and then not yeah, overly saturated i feel like those are that's that is thirst trap because it's like kind of like all right you don't like, post stuff like this all the time so you just 
you want to remind people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this I'm I am exposing myself right now, saying like if I post that, it's because just just a reminder, and also see who's paying attention. Well, I wish you would <laughs> expose yourself more. I personally would like to see more of them. Okay, but. well. I know we all have those time. like people in our life. I mean, in general, that don't post enough. And then the, there's people that post too much and don't, you know, they overcorrect. But well, there's so many people I'm like, get get your tits out. Hell yeah, t girl, get your tits out. Especially because it's like I spend a lot of time in goblin mode. Goblin to goddess ratio sometimes is like not quite equal. So like I got to like, sometimes it's a good ego boost. What is goblin mode for you? Go where I'm d the opposite of hot in every sense of the word so i'm like i haven't put makeup on in like three days been wearing like sweatpants but not what just not look, i'm i'm in at home gear like straight up like haven't washed my hair haven't put makeup on haven't looked in the mirror like just i look scary i think sometimes aesthetic girls act like they get into that but i'm like oh you've never no, no, been no. in real goblin mode no like it's like oh what because like you're like oh my god my hair is like messy it's in like a messy but no 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 we're talking like goblin mode here's an example this is what a goblin does okay last night i ordered mcdonald's before bed obviously <laughs> i ate the mcdonald's before bed i put extra ketchup on my little weird cheeseburgers that i get or grilled cheese basically it's just like a cheeseburger with no meat I like a lot of ketchup and I bit into it and I just washed my Heather Gray Barefoot Dreams. Oh, yeah. Robe. No, like the clothes are like dirty. Ketchup on all over the lapel of the robe. OK. <laughs> and I was just like, Ugh, I just washed this. So I put it in a pile somewhere where my cat couldn't find it. I put that on this morning. I got <laughs> I got ready in the ketchup robe and I probably need to wash it when I get home. I mean, obviously I wear leggings every day, but this isn't even goblin mud. Like the old shitty sweatpants that I have had since 2016 that I still wear. We have that same pair that like old Nike one. Those this is like gross. They're like stretched out. There's like maybe a bleach hole stains, in it. Bleach hole. stain, makeup stains. Like we're not talking like filth, but like we're talking like it's like stained or there's like makeup on it or like it's something like that where it's just like you're not going to be around anyone. No one is meant to see you. Mm -mm. Like you're you're not presentable by any means. Like like I wouldn't answer the door looking like that. Oh, so when the DoorDash is being dropped off, <laughs> I sit there like I'm I'm being hunted by federal agents and like wait for them to leave because I'm <laughs> my biggest fear is them you opening it to get it and them getting a photo of that and I'm like <laughs> and you have to run away. I'm like no, I that is real goblin mode. <laughs> Doesn't mean you got to open up the door. And just reach your hand. <laughs> yeah, just get a hand. Oh, and then my neighbor, too. I'm like, I never want to make eye contact with you when you're like that. It's when you've been in that goblin mode and you haven't spent any time in goddess mode in a long time. So you're like, you know what? Like, I, what do I got to do to make myself feel better? Go find that picture that you've been <laughs> banking for some time. Throw that on the gram. Problem solved. Yeah. You know, because it's just like, you don't feel like getting out of that mode yet. What is your ratio percentage wise? These days, it's been a little off balance. Mine's probably 85, 15. <laughs> Goblin heavy. I'm not even kidding. Okay, you. Mine's been like 70, 30. Oof. I need to work toward better because it's I'm so gross all the time. I mean, like usually when we're like filming or I have like more stuff going on, it's it's way more like it's the opposite. 70 percent in goddess mode, 30 percent. I wish I had more time for goblin mode. But I have to like have like makeup on all the time and look, you know, I'm like dressed all the time. But like these days, it's like I have definitely like more time not having to like put a face on or do anything. So like I'm, you know, whether my ass is out or not, if I take a good photo, I have an outfit, a look on it's going on the gram because it's so rare. And so <laughs> people probably think I look more normal more of the time. But yeah, it's more of the <laughs> anyway, I want you to tell me. Who's in your basement this week? Oh, okay. In my basement this week, besides everyone wearing those ridiculous Apple Violin goggles, guys. I'm going to have to put Travis Kelsey in my basement. Mm, okay. Explain. Merely because after, and I get it, they just won the Super Bowl. The man's excited. He can celebrate and hoot and holler as much as he wants. But when he was screaming, Viva Las Vegas on repeat over and over, like I was the ick was growing inside of me i was just like please put a muzzle on this man like I, I i like i like looked at taylor and she just looked like she was disassociating from that moment i was just like girl i got it like 
I would be too. Like it was giving so much cringe. I actually don't think you're alone in that. I wasn't that's, alone. I, I saw to that all over this. everything. Okay, yeah, but, people being like, "This is the moment the ick happened for her." If they break up. <laughs> that's she was why. like, oh, "Pretty gross." Um, but you know, I get it. I get it. Like he was excited and all that, but it was just like, yeah, he, like that's bracement behavior. People were talking about how he pushed his coach really hard, and that was just yeah. I know. I understand I, you're fired up, but and then the coach was like, Andy Rue was um like defending him so hardcore. He's just like, you know what? He just. He wanted to be out there helping his team win. And, you know, I gave it right back to him. I'm like, well, I didn't, I, I didn't see you give it back to him. Um, we just saw him. <laughs> he was like, I deserved it. Football's a pointy, pointy ball. It's a, it's just like a aggressive ass sport. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but like, he's getting dragged enough for it. I'll just, I'm just going to drag him for the Viva Las Vegas thing. Like, sir, don't do Elvis like that. It's hard Who's to Who's in your basement? I have two. Oh. Because one is like so ambiguous, but it just happens to be. One of my biggest pet peeves, anyone who has a car or motorcycle that is unnecessarily loud and vroom vrooms down the street, <sighs> it, it, that's my version of you listening to people eat, like the rage that that fills you with, it tips me over the scale in a way I can't explain. Like you get it. You have a huge penis. Giant. You, you have bodies, but they're, you know, bodies because of your <laughs> big giant dick. Yeah. Swing it. Hate that. But the other one is actually we found out about this because some people wrote in there was a advertiser who was lying about their category and what they mm -hmm. were. They were automatic ads for our podcast and they were a pro-life, very gross propaganda. And mm -hmm. it wasn't just our show. It was many other shows and people wrote in were horrified. We are obviously both very pro-choice. That was disheartening to hear. And yeah, guys, we didn't. We didn't know. We didn't know. Thank you. And also thank you to the people who wrote in so we could stick them in our basement. And we found out. But they have since been found and they are removed from all the shows they were on. Thank God. We love to see that. Yeah. Despicable. Anyway, um, should we do WWDD? We should. Ah, we got to write this. <laughs> My life is so hectic and I travel a lot. Daily Harvest has honestly been a lifesaver. It's designed to be effortless. It's non-perishable and delivered straight to your door. I can just walk over to my freezer and I have so many just incredible healthy options. We love Daily Harvest. It's for anyone who cares about the type of food that they put in their bodies. When it comes to eating well, it's totally a guessing game. Even if something's easy to prep and it looks good to me, the label's full of ingredients that I'm always trying to avoid. And that's why I love Daily Harvest. I recently was not feeling well after a night out and <sighs> I needed something that was going to help me survive and come back and nourish my body. And I was so glad that I had Daily Harvest in my freezer. There's no gluten fillers, seed oils added, sugars and starches. So all I have to do is say yes to delicious, easy to prep smoothies that never leave me wondering what am I really eating. Daily Harvest really takes the guesswork and effort out of cooking because they deliver delicious smoothies and other options that are built on organic fruits, vegetables straight to my door. So I can get yummy smoothies and meals that are ready in minutes without the trouble of shopping or prepping and cleaning up. The worst. <laughs> the worst. Especially after a night out. With over 10 different collections, there's also something for everyone. They have smoothies, soup, harvest bowls, and even desserts. And I actually used to think they were just smoothies, but they have so much different stuff that you can choose from. So you never get bored when it comes to meals and snacks. And you can have Daily Harvest just as is, or you can tweak it and build it to your lifestyle. I personally love them as it is, but if I'm feeling fancy, I can add a little something to them. Mm -hmm. A little something, something. Sure can. I personally love the strawberry peach one. That's what I've been thriving off of lately. And the blueberry cacao. Oh, the blueberry cacao is delish. Staple. There's a peach one I love. There was a mint one that I love. I mean, I've got some faves mm -hmm. for sure. And the harvest bowls are really delicious. Very, very filling. And I like that it takes like less than five minutes. Two seconds to make. <laughs> it's great. Yes. And by using only recyclable or compostable packaging when possible, Daily Harvest is doing their part to take care of the earth, which we love and is so important to us. Take the guessing out of eating well and try Daily Harvest. For a limited time only, go to dailyharvest.com slash disrespectfully to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping. That's dailyharvest.com slash disrespectfully for $30 off your first box and free shipping. That's dailyharvest.com slash D-I-S-R-E-S-P. 
P-E-C-T-F-U-L-L-Y. Rocket money. Rocket money. Rocket money. How many times have you had subscriptions that you completely have forgotten about? (laughs) Girl, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Like hundreds of dollars just at like that's going to like God knows what. That you're losing for you don't even know why. The most random stuff. It's like all those emails that you always want to unsubscribe from. It's those random things that you completely forget about. I mean, I know the I know the main ones. I know I'm subscribed to every screen streaming service that there is. But Probably like, twice. That's no one's business. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but all those other ones, you got to cut them out. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending and helps lower your bills. Which we can all use a little bit of right now. Mm-hmm. Completely love. I can see all my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a few taps. Super easy. I don't have to get on the phone with customer service, which that can go in the basement because (laughs) I hate dealing with that. We'll avoid it at all costs. Yeah. They'll even try to negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Almost $800 a year is insane. That's it. You're just leaving on the table. Eight hundred dollars. Think of what. Think of what you could spend that money on. You could definitely not put it toward your Apple Vision Pros. You could put it toward <laughs> something else. But yeah, that's a ton of money. Yeah. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions. Going to RocketMoney.com/slash/disrespectfully. That's RocketMoney.com/slash/disrespectfully. RocketMoney.com/slash/disrespectfully. Hi, Dana and Katie. I'm a huge fan of you both and love the pod. Also, the name is brilliant and perfect. Thanks. My question is, I'm grappling with ending a 10-year relationship, but we have had a puppy for three years that I'm in love with. And the thought of losing her or time with her is devastating to me. He loves her, so I would feel terrible suggesting that she stay with me, even though she is more bonded to me. And sharing custody means neither of us could move away. Any advice on how to handle and deal with this? Mm-hmm. Well, you know a thing or two about it, so I'd say you go ahead and take. I this know, one. I know. Well, you have to talk about it. You have to communicate about it because you know if she's both of y'all's pets, you know you both have right to, you know, spend time with her. So I mean, you need to discuss like that open and honestly. I don't know how he, he might he he might be thinking that she should be with you full time, and maybe. For just like a period of time, having her kind of go between the two of you just so you can, one of you can get used to her not being around might like soften the, the blow of losing her. So I mean, it's, it sucks. It's it so sucks. hard. It sucks. But truthfully, sharing custody is wonderful for the humans that love their pets, but it's not always the best thing for the pets. And that's something that I've definitely learned over time with Tom and I doing that with the dogs. I mean, he definitely was like, like they're, they're like human. They, they love me and I love them so much, but like he was like, their like go to, he did all the meals. Yeah. And like he, you know, he was the one that like, well, this is what you have to do with Gordo when we go outside. You know, he was the one that was like the go to. Oh, he was like Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen all of a sudden when those dogs he, needed to eat. Oh yeah. Like love the, in the walk. He had to do like their meal a certain way. And he did like always did most like the vet stuff. Like he was kind of like, that was like his sort of like thing. I took care of other stuff in the household. So like he took care of the dogs mostly. And, and so I just knew that like oh, these dogs are like the center of his universe. So like there's no world in which I would take them from him. Yeah. Absolutely not. But also like the idea of just like, me never seeing them or that me them just like not being with me was a crushing thought so they went back and forth but then he and I live like very separate lives and you know different schedules and lifestyles so them coming with me they have a very different schedule when they're with me and then they go to Tom different schedule Tom so like them kind of not having that kind of consistency in their day-to-day is not the best thing for them yeah I would say whatever is in the best interest of the animal which is hard but i would that's where yeah where we're at right now if you can have it sounds like this person is being considerate and the partner is as well so it starts with a really honest conversation of you two sitting down and with 
the pet's best interest in mind, I would say, and yeah. seeing what the game plan is. And obviously it's difficult for you. And also it does tie you to this person longer. So if it's something that you really need them out of your life to move forward, that's also something to consider. But yeah, you got to talk it out. But it's a tough situation. All of that was to say that ultimately it's going to come down to what's going to be the best thing for the dog and not for you. And especially if you're planning on moving away, like one of you is going to have to accept. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's so hard. Tara Lynn says, congratulations on the pod. Loving it. It's been 10 years since my last real love relationship. It's not for a lack of trying, but I feel like the foster girlfriend and there has been nothing for a long time. How to cope with feeling unwanted and hopelessness. Age 35, never married, no kids. Tara Lynn, take a seat. Take a seat right over here. <laughs> I would say you have to allow yourself to just feel sad about it. Like I'm such a proponent of rejecting toxic positivity because it can be sad and if you are dating and putting yourself out there and dealing with rejection and disappointment and feeling like a foster girlfriend which that's I've never heard that term that <laughs> makes so much sense no foster fails for me lately I would say that sitting with that is part of it because it it is shitty but then trying your best to pull yourself out of it by focusing on people in your life that make you feel good things that make you feel good continuing to know that you've come this far so stick it out like don't settle because you're feeling that way. And I think if you're coming from a place when you're dating of that energy of like starting to feel worried and, and wanting more to have someone just fill the space because you're feeling those things like loneliness and whatnot, you should probably take a step back, get a little healed up, which I know is hard. It's hard doing the work, but for me, important or you could end up in a really toxic relationship. Yeah. And you're um, not alone. So many women, <clears throat> men out there, too, if that helps you at all. Like we've all been there. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we've kind of spoke about this numerous times that being, you know, in your 30s and still single is not the worst thing ever, mm -mm. to be honest. I feel like, you know, I met someone when I was in my 20s and stayed with him for 12 years and it didn't work out. So, I mean, comparing yourself to what other people have going on is just like never the move anyway. But I think being this particular age and like really like knowing yourself and being really confident and assured is just going to put you in a position to meet somebody and have a more successful type of relationship. So just because it hasn't worked out with multiple people doesn't say anything about you. No. Oh, my God. Do not put weight on whether a relationship succeeds or mm -hmm. fails about so like, what you who you are. So, Please. yeah, rather than saying to making it about you being unwanted. No, you don't want what doesn't want you. You and also I'm guessing you're probably not choosing the right people if that is the outcome. So it does make you feel that way. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like you then believe you're not lovable, mm -hmm. but you are lovable. You just haven't found your right person. And I know it's frustrating to hear that. And people say that all the time, but it is also true. I mean, it has. Are you are there patterns that you are kind of falling into? When it comes to picking people, are you dating the same type of person? Are you going back to the same type of places? Like there there may be those types of things that are happening. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Taking a step back, maybe to do a little examining when like I know you're asking more to cope, but I feel like part of coping is changing the outcome, right? And that can come mm -hmm. from learning more about yourself and who you're picking, but you're not alone. No. 35 is young. 30s are the so. shit. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> all right. Next one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi. This is what it says. My name is Avery, and I love y'all and this podcast so much. Thank you. I love how raw and real you guys get, and we share most, if not all, opinions and morals, etc. So it feels like I'm just chatting with two friends when I listen. That being said, I'm 26, about to turn 27, and just moved to Dallas. My boyfriend lives out here as well. I know some people that live here, but I don't have that core group of people that I can call up and hang out with besides my boyfriend. Any advice on making friends as an adult? This shit <laughs> is fucking hard and awkward. Thanks in advance. Ugh. You know, making friends in adulthood is like weird and awkward. I get it. Um, but I think it's so fun and so absolutely doable. I mean, and then being in a new city is exciting I think it is totally doable but it's honestly like harder than dating I would say like it is so I was 26 when I moved to 
California originally. I went to San Diego and I did not know a single person when I moved there. Mm-hmm. I moved there with my job. So the first few months I lived like it, at least you have a boyfriend there like you but you obviously want to have your own separate life outside of your relationship. Mm-hmm. I was so lonely. I used to go to this store called Pigment, which is a really cute store where you can like make these succulent things. And like every Sunday I would go and do that to the point that I got so good at it. People thought I was an employee when they would come and I would help them and I would just like <laughs> make my succulents and cry. And mm-hmm. One of the first friends I made, we were in this girl, we were in the gym class together. And honestly, I needed to find a good person to do my hair. So and she had pretty blonde hair. So I asked her where she got her hair done. And then I started like really on the low stalking her to like try. I was like, I want to like ask her on a friend date. And I did. And I met her. And then she introduced me to a few people. So like it's also once you meet one person, it's easier to kind of start yeah. meeting people. So I would say you just have to be bold and keep your creepiness to yourself. But like it's OK to stalk someone at the gym or the grocery store or if you're out at a bar and people seem fun you really have to open yourself up and have that energy of like looking for friends want more people in my life yeah and I think like based on what you're into like if it is like a workout class or like where people like your age kind of frequent and go to like if it's not I mean there's always like the bars okay fine Mm -hmm. but yeah I think like workout classes or nails <laughs> I don't know I'm like trying to think like it could be anywhere it's just like dating you could meet someone anywhere so I think it's more about just being open and putting yourself in uncomfortable situations that mm-hmm. you wouldn't necessarily normally do yeah if you see if like somebody uh is again like wearing something that you like or you have the same thing or if like you want to ask them like just be like bold I think She's like, hey, where did you get that jacket? I've been looking for something like that. Oh, cool. Where's that at? And then when you're friends, you can reveal to them later on. You've stalked them on Instagram. And you know everything about them. <laughs> really? Just don't do it beforehand. But yeah, I think just getting bold and like be willing to like talk to people in public. Scary stuff than, sometimes. Yeah, easier said than done. But ugh. you can mm. do it, Avery. We believe in you. Yeah. And if I mean, if you already know some people that, you know, live there, like maybe also you start there. You have a boyfriend. Who are your boyfriend's friends? Where are those their girlfriends? Where are their people? So mm-hmm. also use your boyfriend as a resource. Tell him like I need, I need a friend group here. I need people, and I'm sure he knows people. He yeah. that too. And I think like sometimes like it's like kind of bridging the gap of like meeting someone and then being like, how do I ask them to hang out? Like I I would say like ask me if we want to go for like a walk, get a coffee, and go for a walk. Like start there. You know, yeah. it was like not so aggressive. I don't know. Yeah. No, start with being like, do you want to get blacked out? See what happens. Just kidding. Don't do that. (laughs) Skyla says, I found out my boyfriend of four years has been going on chatterbait and jerking off on live camera for the entirety of our relationship. Would you consider this cheating? What the fuck is chatterbait? Hold on. I think it's yeah, it's like it's like a chat room where wait. That was one of the topics I want to talk about. Maybe we can continue that next week. I fucking love chat roulette sometimes, usually when I'm drunk. But <laughs> anyway, so it's like a it's kind of like a subsection of chat roulette. It's like its own thing that like people will. Yeah. OK, I'm curious what the like pleasure that he would get out of just like masturbating in front of people. But I don't know. I think with cheating, when you're the one in the relationship, you have to define for yourself. For me, I'm kind of in the camp of let your freak flag fly. And if it's just kind of a thing that they this person likes to do i don't know that that would bother me that much but i also understand if someone was bothered by that right and maybe more the hiding it i think it falls into um like do people consider like watching porn cheating no which i don't i don't don't either but like i think you would need to have a conversation with him and ask him like okay why do you want to hide this do you feel shameful about it yeah or like and, and also like can you explain to me like what it is about this that turns you on or like like, like why you choose this particularly i just want to like understand right i think that's more than okay to ask yeah i would say it's more about you need to set your own boundaries and mm-hmm. get more information and if for me if anything like deceit not down for that so if you feel lied to and that's also something you can address but you have to decide for yourself and you've got to have those combos and i would say Try really hard not to go into it making someone feel shameful if you find out they have a little kink because probably he'll get defensive and, you know, we don't know why he chatterbaits. So we just need to talk about it. Chatterbait. Chatterbaiting. This chatterbaiting is crazy. But uh, anyway. Yeah, I say, yeah, just have a very open, honest conversation. Okay. Danielle says, I married a short king. He's greater, better, bigger than any tall peasant I've dated in the past, Avi, because I married him. How do you guys feel about short kings? Is height really that much of an issue? <laughs> I love talking about this. How about you start? 
Um, for me, I always said height's not necessarily an issue if they don't have an issue with it. Mm. Like, cause I'm on like a slightly like the taller side. I'm like five eight. We're tall. We're both five eight. Yeah. So I mean, especially like with any sort of like a shoe on that has you know that that's like flat footed. So like yeah, like I can get up to like five nine, five ten very easily. So like if a guy is like shorter than average, like we're talking like five six, five seven, I'm gonna be taller than him. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm not really like that concerned with height, but if like they're making issues about it, if they're very insecure about it, then that's probably the only time I'm going to have an issue with it. I have a hard time with this. So if I was 5'3", I'd probably feel differently about it. I'm 5'8", so same thing. Like, it's easy for me to get tall quickly. And I don't know. It's just, it's a thing. People have things they like, right? It's not, I'm not saying that I haven't dated people who are shorter, but it's generally not worked out for me. So I, if I'm glad you, it sounds like you found your person and you're in love. So that's amazing. I don't think there's anything wrong with short Kings. I think that it just, it just depends on the person. And I do, I mean, I would say, do they have a complex about it? Like, are we talking Napoleon or someone who's super secure and goes with it? So no, cause there's some guys that like love the fact that I'm taller. They don't, they don't f- have any issue with them being shorter. They're not like insecure in any way, shape or form about it. Well, I would just want to highlight we talk about this. Even the mediocre ones will disappoint you. And I'm not saying all short kings are mediocre, but if you're like, you know what, his only flaw, he's really short and I don't love that, whatever. I mean, he'll probably cheat on you too, but so it's just kind of like a crapshoot. But yeah, if you meet someone that has a lot of charisma and you really like them and it doesn't bother you, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. It Mm -mm. just depends on the gal. Yeah, no, I I 100% agree. The problem is, on the other hand, people will be like, well, they'll almost let so many things slide because a guy's like tall. Oh, yeah. Like, do you like him or is he just tall? So it's like just <sighs> Jacob Elordi could resurrect my dead mother, slap her in the face and put her back in the grave. But I'd be like, that's fine. Yeah, you so, just salt burn the sequel. I don't care. So, I mean, girls will date a guy just because he's tall. So, I mean, we're going to not date someone just because he's shorter than us. Yeah. I no, mean, right. OK, I, I wouldn't probably date someone if they were like keychain petite size. Like if I'm like if I am not keychain, <laughs> if I can carry him around. In a baby Bjorn, probably not. Correct. But I mean, if I mean, if we're just talking to someone who's like on the shorter side, like shorter than me, like I'm not really gonna have an issue. But like, if if like if he's, yeah, there's limits. I guess that's what we say. <laughs> yeah. To each their own, though. Yes, I'm talking about me. But I'm just giving my personal preference here. Yeah, no baby Bjorns. Andrea says just turned 32 and was in a series of love bombing relationship in my 20s. I've been in therapy for about a year, became a homeowner, and have an amazing job, family, friend group. My therapist told me I was in the honeymoon phase with myself, and now I found myself and cherish being without a man. I'm worried the phase won't end. I need your help to decide if and when I should get back out there. I also don't think I want kids anymore, so that internal clock is not an issue. (laughs) The best. Truly, the amount of pressure we feel as women around this age, like I relate to this entire thing so much, is crazy. First of all, we we have so many homeowners, like independent homeowners in this listening group. You guys are amazing. And sounds like you've really gotten your shit together and you recognize old patterns. So I would say if you feel like you've done the work and you're it's coming at it from a healed place, that's when you know it's time to date. Like if it's coming from an anxious place and just something you feel like you need to tick off a list, it's probably not it. But a phase i hope this isn't a phase this sounds super healthy so let's just hope this is who you're growing into yeah no i mean i think some people are worried that they like just fall in love with themselves and their lives so much that they don't want to interrupt it for any person but i think i think it's such that is like the best place to be because you're going to really be able to differentiate between the right person and the wrong person and you know it's not going to be until the that person that comes along that is just going to be the person that's going to add value to your life you're never going to settle again. Mm-mm. So that's the good news. But it's just going to take somebody who's going to really just be like, wow, like this person would actually make my days a lot brighter and better. And I really want to make space and time for them in my life. Other than that, like, why why interrupt this amazing time in your life? I mean, that's where I live there now. And it's the most stress free I've been in so many years. So it's I, like, yeah, I don't think it's about like you need to like put yourself out there and like really try to look for somebody. I think at this point, like as long as you're I think it's about just staying open and having mm-hmm. that mindset of like, you know what, I'm open to meeting somebody, but let's just see what happens. I think it those it's it's like this time that I think somebody will enter your life if you're mm-hmm. open to it. So I think it's just staying open. And maybe your hoo-ha. <laughs> Depending. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, keep writing them in, you guys. Disrespectfully pod at Gmail. Keep them short and sweet. We love reading them. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you all get lots of love today. Love yourself. Don't forget. Yeah. And we love you. Most importantly. Bye. Bye. <laughs>